we're, we're this dish, we're, we've got to prep everything before we start the cooking um, because it's not, a, it's not a long dish. Uh, it's not complicated, but you just need to make sure you've got all your ingredients ready. So I'll just give you a couple of minutes. So put a pan of water on for your pasta, plenty of salt, don't need any oil. That's a lot of uh, tosh. Um, uh, so just make sure it's nice, nicely seasoned with salt. Um, I've so I've put the sake, mirin, and soy sauce in there already. So if you want to put that in there, um, three tablespoons of sake, two tablespoons of mirin, and two tablespoons of soy sauce. Um, my stock is already there. I've picked my herbs. Onion is peeled. I just again I'll run through how how to chop it nice and finely. Uh, garlic I've peeled. I know I've said that to be chopped already, but you know we can take our time. Uh, and mushrooms. I've got so I've got oyster and shimeshi. Uh, whatever uh, mushrooms you got to use, but we'll just run through them and have a prep it, and then. Asparagus. I'll just show you how to prep that very quickly. Uh, very simple. Need a large frying pan. So you've got plenty of uh, volume for all your, your mushrooms so they don't stew too much. Um, and then you can put the pasta, cook pasta in there so it's nice and coated in the sauce. It's not on top of each other. What I did notice, I put 100 grams of dry pasta uh, for two portions, but I looked at it and it's probably not enough. I mean, the recommended main course portion is 75 grams. So if you just want to add a little bit more dried pasta, um, whatever you're using, I've just got to... First things first. So whatever mushroom you're, you're prepping, So I've got um, shimeshi, so you can see they're all joined by the root there. So I'm just going to take that off. And then they should all just come apart. Just like that. And then that's, that's all you've got to do to that. Because they're already nice size. Let's put them away. Oyster mushrooms. You can slice them, but you don't need to mess about. You can just do it like that, tear them. They're nice and easy. Try and make them roughly all the same size. So they'll all cook evenly. So my pan is still not on the heat. I'll just let, I'll give you a little heads up when to do that. Okay, so obviously if you're using um, different mushrooms, um, prep them as, as you wish. Okay, I said a bunch of asparagus, so I'd say, depending on the, the thickness, because these, these, these ones are quite thin. Um, so the, the, the best way to Prep them obviously if you if you're doing 20 kilo, which we would normally do in the hotel or restaurant, um, we would cut the stem off. But here we've got a bit more time. So if you just snap it, then that will snap at the right point of where that's not really that nice and edible. It's very woody. You'd make you could make a soup out of that, you could make a veg stock. Um, but that one we're not gonna keep. I'll just put that in my, um, and I'll just show you how to cut them in a minute. They won't all come perfect size either.
No, that's not for me. And then I'm going to cut these too small because the, these these will cook quite quickly. Um, so you just want to, I'll just show you one, and then you can do it. You just want to cut it at an angle. So it's looking nice. Um, oblong and slant, the best way to see that. Yeah. And then when you're doing all of them, you'd have your, have this at an angle as well. So you're getting them all the same length. And then just nice and easy. You're not doing them all individually. And a little bit longer ones, you can cut them again. Okay, that's prepped. So at this point, we'll stick on our frying pan because we've got a chopper onion and our garlic. So stick on to a medium high heat, about four and a half, five, um, or if you've got gas, um, whatever that is, it's a medium to high flame. Okay, chopping the onion. So what's the keeping the root on? I've cut this in half. And you need to just be careful. Uh, just as you can see, using your fingers like a claw, protect yourself, leaving the tip of the knife up against your finger. Don't cut it like that, and otherwise you won't have any fingernails left. Okay, just nice and easy, all the way through. As far to the, the top of the root as possible. Just nice, simple strokes. And we've got to take a knife into the middle. This is only a small onion, so um, we'll just, we'll go through that. Nice, easy, simple, all the way through. Again, keeping your fingers away from the edge of the blade. Yeah, move that to the side, and then you do the next one. This comes with confidence, obviously. I've been doing it for a very long time. Uh, I know I don't look it. Right. No comments. Okay. Now, as you get to that stage, just nice, simple strokes all the way down. You see, you've got that nice, fine dice. I don't worry if it's not perfect, you know, it's, we're not, we're not paying hundreds of pounds for this. And same with the next one. Nice, simple. So from having all of this prepped, it should take the same amount of time as your pasta. So, you know, if you've got everything ready, it should take from this stage, 10 to 12 minutes. There's a question now, we've not got to the, um, if you just get to the, where you've got your onions and garlic first. So I'm just got a great, you can chop your, your garlic and with the onion. So that'll just go in first. I'm just gonna put the, so a tablespoon or two tablespoons of oil, uh, any cooking oil you, you wish. 
And then I'm just going to put the onions and garlic into the pan. And we'll put that in there for about a minute, just to start going a little bit translucent. Okay, if your pan of water for your pasta uh, is boiling, I mean, there's no need to rush. So I won't put anyone under pressure. So we'll just take it a little bit easy. Okay, keep it moving so you don't get any um, uh, color on your on your onions. Not going black. Okay. So it, now they've been in there for about a minute, a minute and a half. I'm going to put in the um, mushrooms. I'm going to sweat these down. A lot of, you want a white pan for this. Uh, because mushrooms got a, a lot of water inside and you don't want them to stew too much. Don't agitate the pan either um, because you'll lose the heat. Okay, perfect. Don't put the asparagus in. You want that to have a, a bit of a bite as well. So I'm going to put my pasta in. Uh, for those of you not aware, you just take your pasta, keep it in a bunch, lift it in the middle of the pan and just drop it. Don't drop it all over your stove. <laughs> and then it's got a nice um, evenly distributed in the pan and that will cook down a bit quicker. It won't clump together. I know they say don't cook live with kids and animals. Some of that should be uh, chefs as well. Okay. So there's a little bit of color happening in the onions. So just move them around. Don't be tempted to put more oil in the pan because the oil, the mushrooms will absorb the oil and then you end up with quite, you know, an oily finish, which is not what we want. We end up with a nice clean um, flavour at the end. Not mass with loads of oil. Uh, the, the pasta is in a rolling boil. And then whatever, you know, however long that takes, um, depending on the, which brand it is, it takes between 9 and 12 minutes. Um, but you just set yourself a timer for it, because you don't want overcooked pasta. You can cook it more, but you can't cook it less. Okay. So, these mushrooms now starting to wilt down. But now, this is where I would add my uh, asparagus. So there's not going to be a lot of more cooking happening. So this is why I guess it's from Kent. Uh, the season tends to only normally last only six weeks. So when you get the opportunity, have it. It's absolutely a fantastic ingredient. Um, 
grill their poached egg or you know some hollandaise. Simple. Good nutritional vegetable as well. Okay. So now I'm happy with that. Where I'm at with that. So now I'm going to add uh, soy, sake, and mirror. You just got to kick the alcohol of the sake down a little bit so it's not too strong in alcohol. Obviously, you're not using sake, you can use a little bit more mirin, but you just need to be careful um, in the level of the balance of sweetness to acidity. If we're using the sake, like we would use white wine. Okay. So just control your heat. It's too hard. Just uh, turn it down. I don't want to reduce that all the way down because I still want the flavour in there. So I'm going to add uh, some veg stock. Get that down a little bit. about four or five minutes. Don't add any salt at this point because depending on the level of salt for your um, soy sauce and plus it will reduce, it will intensify in, in saltiness. So just season this at the end so it, um, you know, you're not reaching for loads of water or what well, I've done, I've put the sake in the freezer which the other half doesn't know until now. We have a little treat with dinner tonight. Okay. Just check your pasta. Still um, boiling away. Okay, herbs. So I, I've got um, flat parsley and uh, coriander, coriander I've left the stocks on because um, that's where all the flavour is in that flat parsley the stocks were a little bit thicker so a little bit more woodier so here we, we don't need to be perfect but again the same concept with the, the onion again here you've got your two fingers uh, resting the knife on there and then just just do a little chiffonade, as it's called in the industry. And just nice and simple strokes. Ideally, you won't have a sharp knife for this because if you don't, you've got to bruise the, um, the herb and leave all the flavor onto your chopping board, which defeats the purpose, really. Yeah, just nice and fine. We'll add this once the pasta's in there. So I had this dish here, um, when I was in Australia, city dropping. Um, and it was recommended to me by a friend who said, oh, because he used to live there, he said, oh, try a place called Tetsuya and I'd never really heard of it to be honest so when I got to Sydney I looked, I just booked it didn't know anything about it didn't know it, well it sounded obviously Asian and um, we were over there and the Six Nations were on on a Friday night and we got home about four in the morning as you do and um, we had the lunch booking and we said we'll just we'll go there have a couple of courses and then leave because obviously traditionally you you go home here 
kebab or something. Um, and then we turn up and uh, we sat down and he said, oh, Saturday lunch we do 12 courses. There's no menu. And it's like, wow. Okay, I guess we've got to have 12 courses. Um, before I carry on, just check your, your pasta. Mine's still got a bit more to cook. Yeah, as well. As we're sitting down to lunch, we get to know the, um, the waiters, because obviously you're there for the four hours. Uh, find out I'm a chef, so they give us an extra three courses. Um, so we end up 15 courses, saw the kitchen. At the time, it was the fourth best restaurant in the world. Um, uh, absolute fantastic experience. So if you're ever in Sydney, look up Tet Sawyer. Um, and this was one of the dishes that I had. Um, and it stayed with me ever since. Got a cookbook, signed, to the kitchen. Absolutely stunning. Um, and that was 16 years ago. So, and that's still top of my memory for best experience. Okay, enough of me blabbing. All right. My pasta is done. And we've just got a drain now. For those that you joined late, I in the recipe I had put um, 100 grams, but give yourself an extra 50 grams. So you want a dried weight of 75 grams, 30 grams per proportion. Okay, make sure it's nicely drained because you don't want to dilute the flavors that are in here. Plus if you've salted your pasta again, you don't need more salt in here. Okay. Just getting one pot in here now. We'll start doing some salads for the summer. Okay, you see that just coating nicely in there. Simple pasta dish. Um, just a little bit of a difference because People are scared of Asian produce or, you know, but as I say every week, have a play around with it. There's no rules. It's whatever you like, what, what you don't like. Okay, I'm going to turn that off because the, the heat in the, in the hob will still be there. And I don't want that to reduce too much. Well, herbs are in. Now we're getting a nice coat in here. So the only bit of fat in there is the oil at the beginning. So this is, you know, nice and clean, full of flavor. And I put in the, at the end, the optional, if you want some chili flakes or chili powder, sesame seeds, again, you know, I'm not you. Um, if you've got that to hand, or you've got other uses for it, the chili. And to be honest, that's pretty much it. Dishing it up. I'm going to leave it in here a little bit. If there's any questions. Uh, queries. Yeah, anything else? I'll go and enjoy. Thanks, Chris. No problem. Enjoy.